it is large. And just like she said, it is hard to handle if you're not used to a car of this size. Damn. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of LJ's Garage. I am sitting in a 2021 Dodge Charger Scat Pack. This is the one with the 6.4 liter V8. And man, oh man, oh man. If you know me, I'm a big Mopar fan. And I know that I don't give necessarily fair treatment to all the other muscle cars but for some reason Dodge just gets me you know there's something about this big V8 and this big wide body looking sedan that just it just hits all the sweet spots you know and there's not many people that will argue with me on that maybe the Mustang guys but I'm not too worried about what Mustang guys think on this video even though there's so many videos out there already on this scat pack thank you for stopping by and checking out mine if you're new to the channel consider hitting that subscribe button Yes, I know there's some of you out there. Must you cause should be two doors. That's fine. The Challenger exists. But today we're going to talk about the Charger and what makes this thing so amazing. So not only am I going to talk about power, specs, things like that, we're also going to dive into what makes this comfortable to live with every day. Because that's the good thing about these is these are designed to be daily driven cars. Some people build them up to do a little bit more than that, but that's, you know, one of those to each their own kind of situations. We'll start with the exhaust. Sounds so good. As mentioned earlier, this is a 6.4 liter big V8. It makes about 485 horsepower and about 475 foot-pounds of torque, weighing in at about 4,300 pounds. It'll do zero to 60 in just shy of 4.4 seconds, which to me, can't complain there. The color on this one is the gorgeous Go Mango. Don't ask me what that means, but I love it, Go Mango. I think I'm gonna name my first child that, Go Mango. And on top of that, you do get a lot of luxury in here, which I will dive into in just a little bit, but other than the specs, there's really not much to dive into because that's the biggest thing about this is the big V8. It is a big car. And the next thing that I wanna mention, when it comes to the Charger, Dodge wants to make sure everyone and their mom can have any trim they want. There's some, something that fits every budget. I do wanna apologize if the drone footage is a little shaky. It's terribly windy outside, so I wanted to at least capture the beauty of this car the best way that I could, and the drone is just easier for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and take you guys down for a second, and we're gonna just do a little walk around of the outside. Hopefully it's not too windy. All right, so there you have it. This is the outside. Like I said, the Go Mango color is pretty good looking. You got your 392 badge, your Hemi badge right there. Then on the front, you got your Scat Pack badge right there, so you know what you're driving. And originally, the Scat Pack whole idea is that it's supposed to be kind of inspired by the Rat Pack, so you're never really alone. You have your friends, which you can get these in every color of the rainbow, pretty much, and all of your friends can drive around in these chargers, looking pretty cool. And let's talk about your key fob here. You're going to have your unlock lock, and you do have remote start, so we'll go ahead and lock this up, hit the double click. There it is. You are going to have keyless entry, so you just put your hand under here, push that button to lock. Pretty easy. We'll hop in the back seat and take a look what you get there. Right now, I've got plenty of space. I am 5'9", and I guess I should say like a little bit. I feel like I've grown just a tiny bit. But this is plenty of space. This is the biggest sedan that you're really gonna get with this kind of engine that's really gonna offer you practicality and all of the good stuff that you need. So I'm comfortable back here, got plenty of headroom, and there's really nothing else to dive into. You got USB ports as well, and your climate control vents, but that's really it. A little place for your maps behind the driver's seat and the passenger seat, and seat belts. If you don't know what the back seat is all about, find your friend that knows all about the back seat, and they can tell you what kind of magic goes on back here. But this is a very roomy back seat for all sorts of magic. I was so focused on the magic in the back seat, I forgot to record a clip of the trunk, but here is one from my last video on the Charger Hellcat. Ignore the audio wiring, but this has a pretty sizable trunk. I'm gonna just go have some fun driving this thing because that's what this is all about. So I'm gonna switch drive modes though, because I do not own this. Like I said, SVG Motors, Beaver Creek, Ohio. Hopefully you guys can get a little bit of that sound. I'll probably crack this window just a little bit. The one thing I will make note of is that this, the size of this thing, it's large. It is large. And just like she said, 
it is hard to handle if you're not used to a car of this size. quick it doesn't feel as fast as cars that are lighter with this kind of power because power to weight is a important thing but just getting it around some turns giving it some gas <laughs> that's what this is about this thing is fun and I know that it's just mashing pedals and handling is not superb by any means but this is not, if you're not taking this on the track, normal driving roads that are for every day, this can handle it. You know, a lot of people like to say, oh, this doesn't have the handling and the great feel of a Corvette, for example. However, that's not what this is about. This is just about straight line performance. But I will say that Dodge has done a pretty good job with this suspension that everything... The transmission is tuned just right, and I love that there's all these different maps programmed in here, so you can kind of get a feel for it and find the style and the track setup or the sport mode, whatever customizing you want to do in there that makes this work for you. Paddle shifters, they're pretty solid. They're quick enough. makes a good sound a very good sound and I mean I can't say that this isn't fun if someone tries to say that Dodge isn't all that fast or isn't all that cool well I mean I guess you'll see right after this I'm actually gonna film a police interceptor version of the charger because I've always wanted to drive one of those and I know that that's just something I can have a lot of fun with and it's so different but it's also so similar because Dodge takes this charger and they just do so much with it. Oh man, this sounds so good. I'm getting three miles per gallon currently. Downshift to sixth, downshift to fifth, pretty smooth, sounds good. Downshift to fourth, downshift to third, 3000 RPM. Ooh. I will say I love that with the paddle shifters, Dodge went ahead and they did the hold right on the paddle to go back to auto mode. So some people might enjoy that. So far, I haven't mashed the throttle. I haven't completely just slammed it to the floor. So I'm not giving it 100%. And I'm sure some people say, oh, you know, well, that's why you're not really, you know, seeing how squirrely these things can be. But you should roll into throttles for the safety of your car more times than not. And since this isn't my baby, I'm never gonna mash this throttle and just completely launch this thing. But I can imagine that it would be a hell of fun. And then on top of that, just be cool to see how much these tires spin. Cause that's one thing about this is rolling burnouts. It'll do this for days. And I mean, I guess if you're that kind of person, then that's great. But for me and for the sake of 20 inch tires, I probably will not be doing rolling burnouts whatsoever. So this is what everything looks like from your driver's standpoint. My favorite thing is you're gonna have your little 392 Scat Pack B right there. On the seats, you're gonna have your little Scat Pack B right there. These seats are heavily bolstered, but very nice. They hug you very nicely. These are the biggest seats I think I've ever sat in in a sedan. They are pretty much very similar to the ones you find in the Grand Cherokee, funny enough. You got your lighting controls over there, nothing too crazy, nothing too special. Steering wheel, nothing aggressive, but it's just enough sportiness to make you feel like you're in a sporty inspired sedan. Your gauges, they're gonna be half digital, half analog, so you can use the center display right there and just kind of use that as your speedometer. All of it is changeable, customizable. You can pretty much do it however you like. So there's nothing too crazy that I would wanna dive into. Like I said, this one is more so for me to just tell you how great this thing is to live with every day other than the gas mileage which is not the best right now so look at that that says 10 miles per gallon but really you're looking at about 15 to 24 miles per gallon and 
it's an 18 gallon tank. So if you are somebody that, you know, <laughs> cares about fuel economy and all that, something to be considerate of. You got your paddle shifters here. They work pretty well with the eight speed transmission. Then over to here, you've got your display, which if you've been in any Dodge products, you know what that looks like. So you've got your nice screen right there. And we'll talk about that in a second. You've got your launch control button right there. You can hit all the drive modes. So I'll push this really quick. You'll see that this brings up your custom display. So you can go to track mode. And if you go to track mode, your stability controls in track mode as well. So let's go to sport. You can see all that. Launch control, you can set your RPMs. You can use line lock, which is pretty much burnout mode essentially. And let's go back into drive modes and you can customize everything and make your own drive mode if you so choose. So let's say we go to track, transmissions in track mode, paddle shifters are on, and traction control is in track setup, which will allow you to slide a little bit more than you would if you were in normal mode. So in sport mode, you'll see here, in the different modes, there is also a suspension damping. So you can go ahead and actually adjust your suspension just a little bit and, you know, toggle everything the way you want. So we'll go into controls. You got your heated seats, heated steering wheel, dimmer or mirror dimmer, go into your settings. Everything else is pretty straightforward. This is a pretty responsive screen and everything is pretty much easy to use. I have zero complaints. If you click on performance, give this a second, it'll load up. It's 72 degrees out, it's so nice, but other than that, it's so stupidly windy. So in your performance pages, there's a lot of information in here whenever this decides to load. So here, you can see your oil pressure, which is pretty nice. You can see how much torque you're making, how much horsepower you're making. Go into gauges. You can get a nice little display with all of those things, which if you click on one, it'll make it a little bit larger, so you can kind of map that out a little bit. You've got timers built in here as well. It looks like no one's really used these recently. Interesting, interesting. Horsepower, all that, G-forces. You got a built-in dyno, so that's pretty nice. Have to try that out, see what that's all about. You can take screenshots and upload them to wherever you need or pay, put them on a little SD card. So in your settings, there's a lot, kind of a couple things we can talk about. We'll talk about safety and driving assistance. You got your park sense and all that, your backup monitor, blind spot monitoring, hill start assist. So just enough luxury to kind of make it feel okay. This is a 2021 and I wanna show you guys what this camera looks like. Very basic. It looks like it's from a Motorola Razr from 2008 or something like that, but that's just how Dodge is. You gotta cut costs somewhere. Climate controls can be handled up here, but you can also do them down here. And then otherwise, there's really not much to dive in in there. Looking down here, you can see you got your cup holders, this little holster area for whatever shenanigans and knickknacks you wanna put. You got another little storage there. Moving to here, you got your glove box, coin little holder, and it's pretty deep. Let me move this out of the way so you guys can see. It's a good little amount of space. You can pop this cover out and there's a little secret compartment for your stash. So we'll throw this back in here. Boom, boom. Over here, you got your glove compartment. Nothing crazy. You got little mini compartments at the top above there. But otherwise, that's it. So the only thing else to talk about is this Alpine sound system, which is pretty nice. See what we got. Hey, hey, hey. So we got music, we got comfort, we got speed, we got four doors. With that all being said, what more could you need? Other than someone saying all wheel drive, I get that. It's not a fully year round car, but guess what? Before all wheel drive, people were driving rear wheel cars around all the time, year round, even in places like Alaska. So it can be done. I don't recommend it on this car because it's squirrely. But if you're a seasoned driver and you know how to respect the power and control your throttle foot, then you'll be all right. Trust me, you'll be all right. Well, I guess I can't just keep driving this thing all day long. If you own one of these and you just like to watch these videos and see what other people think of this car, then you know that I am a huge fan. I've already done the Hellcat and I love the Hellcat. It is a little extra and unnecessary to some, but to me, I 
you can afford it, why not? There's no replacement for displacement. There's only for <laughs> there's only so long that we can actually say that because we're heading to an era where electric cars reign. And so unfortunately that statement has been proven wrong. And so here we are in a day where a 6.4 V8 is a dinosaur. I hate to say it, and that's really the one thing is if you can afford one of these and you can fill this tank up and drive it and have fun, hold on to it. Because we're running out of these cars and Dodge isn't really gonna be making these for much longer. So 2021 is the, possibly, I think 2022 is the last year. I can't remember exactly what the last year is. But either way, if you can afford one of these, have fun, enjoy it, buy it, send it. Like I said, if you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. The support goes a long way. And I hope that me, enjoying this helped you enjoy some part of your day today and yeah let me know what other cars what other variations of this you guys want to see and just if you own one just drop some comments share some thoughts what are some things that you love dislike you know i i'm a huge dodge fan i've got a jeep and it's close enough this is just just right i mean you're not going to be hurting for power you're not going to be hurting for really much other than uh hoping for some better fuel economy but to, yeah, that's 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 a whole nother story. Anyways, thank you guys so much for checking out yet another video. I will see you on the next one. I am going to enjoy this one as I take it back home to the dealership and give it back. But trust me, I'm not excited to give it back. I I just love this. I enjoy the big V8. I'm a sucker for it. So click on the next video, which is either gonna be a challenger or another charger and enjoy the videos, man. Enjoy the videos. It's summertime, and uh, I'm excited to film more. See you guys on the next one.